Hits and Crits. This video is brought to you by Asmodee. What's up, Hits and Crits family? Welcome to the next episode of this Season 5 patch review. And today, I'm really happy to have Randall with me again. Um, hey, everyone. Good to have you, man. Especially on the Greyjoys, because we all know how... Um, um, how much you like the Greyjoys, even though you took a little detour to the Baratheons right now. Um, everyone is aware. But today on the Greyjoys, um, like overall, before we start in, um, we got some changes at least, right? Since other other factions, especially uh, the right uh, the the Night's Watch, didn't get as much. But uh, we mm -hmm. got some, and we got some interesting ones. Um, but probably also not as much as we all would hope for, especially not on the commander side of things. That basically also counts for um, great joys. Um, yeah. But let's jump right in uh, to where this faction used to be in S4. So what's your view on the great joys in S4? Where were they? Uh, I think they were in a pretty strong position overall. They, uh, they were creeping up pretty high on the, on like the power rankings uh, chart, I would say. Yeah. And I, I think they're still in a good position. You know, they were, uh, they were very punchy. They're, uh, they received a, a massive overhaul just a couple of patches ago. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, they were, they're very strong, very punchy, but lots of healing. And then they always have bail on NCU in their back pocket to just yeah. be a little bit irresponsible early in the game and then um, have a little bit of a reset button. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those, most of that hasn't really changed that much. So I, you know, I ex still expect good things from, uh, from the Greyjoy faction in, in season five. Yeah, d d totally. We're in a, in a space when you talk to a lot of players playing Greyjoy and having to ha ha like have to compete with Greyjoy, you hear a lot of, a lot about Balon, obviously, right? So mm -hmm. ba basically the, the, the common opinion on Balon is, that it is a little bit too, yeah, as you said, reckless, right? It's it's it, it's it's kind of like you have seven points more than your opponent, kind of. So so opponents say it's a little bit too strong, maybe, or it's a little bit too oppressive to play against, or at least it's like a bad, a, like like a like a bad feeling to play against something. You kill something and you feel good about it, and there you go, you get punished right after. So um, that's the common opinion on opponents on great joys. A great job players mostly tell me that to play Balon is actually not as easy as it looks and that is hard to to pull off the combo um, in the in the exact moment where it where it should go and I think on a yeah. competitive level that's totally true I think uh, when you go mid in the mid section of things um, there there's where he really really shines and where it's hard to play against and the more it gets competitive the better the players get the more they can negate it a little bit and get you know that's that's the common thing i see in the community do you, can yeah. can you relate to yeah, that yeah no i yeah i agree and like the balon the balon move is is broadcasted and it's not a surprise to anybody yes and yes you know, higher level players are going to know where those most kind of dangerous zones are going to be for them for Balon yeah. to be dropped into. Yeah. So they will probably proactively mitigate the effect of Balon as much as they can before before that unit pops back up. Yeah. So, like you said, I think Balon has mostly been a concern, probably for I would say the the vast majority of Song of Ice and Fire players who don't consider themselves in the high competitive realm which mm. i don't consider myself in the kind of high competitive tier either so you're you know you're you're uh kind of hearing from a lot of the folks in the community who are playing locally at their local game stores and you know they had a, a bad experience here or there with balon and um no. you know now they you know they want him to be changed and i think he does he does deserve a, a bit of a change but yeah if balon was as oppressive as he is made out to be then Greyjoys would just be like mopping the floor with every other faction and that just hasn't been the case so i think it is like you said a little bit of a a little bit of an outsized feels bad yeah. uh, of with balon so um but the developers are very open to complaints in the community and to yeah. community feedback i would say so 
um, it's not a surprise that there's been a, a bit of a bail on adjustment in yeah, this patch. Yeah, totally. It, 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 and, and, and again, I said that before, but I can, I can, I can just repeat myself there. I really appreciate developers taking something that it, that it, that needs attention and do not pull out the bazooka and just shoot it down. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and except for Night's Watch. yeah, <laughs> except for Night's Watch, but yeah, but Night's Watch. Yeah. You know, we just had the video. We discussed it in detail there. It's um, it was a thing that was highly needed. And again, we 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 just think the 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 change the, the changes were needed, but it was a little bit too, yeah, a little bit too tough on them. A little bit like like mm -hmm. one or two things um, out of the three, like nerf it, uh, pull put put triggers in, and do the panic test on the base deck that's probably a little bit too much but you know we will see what uh, future patches will bring us i don't want to reopen that wound <laughs> no 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 uh, I know. Chris, <laughs> it so. just healed it just healed <laughs> okay so now on Greyjoy back again um so yeah so i appreciate to to see little changes and uh to 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 see if it changes the meta is is a, is a really good way to go so let's start with the general changes. General changes on the uh, Great Joyce is also boisterous charisma, and I think we do not have to lose a lot um, time on this one, since boisterous charisma, like on, on, um, from a bird's eye perspective, boisterous charisma was in, was not oppressive in any in any sense, um, probably, but it but it just made a, or, or gave your opponent a, a bad experience of the game because it shut it mm -hmm. so many abilities and stuff you can do on the table so it just shut ev shuts everything down so it was not considered a op i would say but it's yeah it, it's not a good experience yeah. to play it so it's good that it yeah, changed it, uh that they a, changed it yeah. it's a pretty hard counter to like lannister martell martell <laughs> those those two like, yeah so yeah, yeah. yeah like I, I i put a list together against the Martel player who thankfully I'm on friendly terms with um, <laughs> before the, the game. And, you know, I had, I had Asha in there and then I think I had a golden company officer pre nerf in there. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just a complete like counter skew counter counter spec to his, yeah. his list. And he was playing Martel and he still beat me because he's a very good player. Um, but yeah, it just, it just felt a little dirty, you yeah. know, cause you know, you have that experience where the, the player plays plays a card against you that they were really like looking forward to playing, and then yeah. you just kind of tap tap your Asha yeah, card and like... say, you know, not so fast. Like, <laughs> sorry. So it is, yeah, it is, yeah, it was a little bit of a it feels bad. Yeah. And yeah. Um. So yeah, boisterous charisma probably needed to get changed. Yeah. Um, we'll see if this is the right change. I think this is a interesting change. We'll we'll see if it really is. Yeah. Uh. You know. A, a good change or not I, I think it definitely changes the decision making on bringing asha as a commander because mm. like you said people people would bring her as kind of a counter to certain types of lists so like in a two list yeah. format you'd want to yeah. bring asha as like your anti-control uh mm. deck or yeah. army yeah yeah and that's do, do do you feel this changes um i mean like what you've what 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 we've seen in S4 quite a bit was um, you always see Vic, right? Victorian is up there mm -hmm. um, in, as your first list to basically rage through everything and be, because he, he fuels so well with, or he goes so well, he synergizes so well with a base deck um, yeah. and brings amazing cards, right? So it, it, it's just a good commander. So obviously you take him. So is Asha still number two or do you see now with the changes, maybe see some something something else there? Yeah, I think the number two spot is kind of up in the air right now. I don't, I don't know mm. where, who it's going to land on. I, I think Asha still is a very good like defensive commander. So if if Victarian is the, the kind of hyper aggro commander, I think Asha is still a good defensive commander because her cards mm. still do. It's like a little gnat. Sorry. Um, there's a, so she has she has defensive cards, uh, healing cards, and her commander attachment itself is is very tanky. Yeah. Um, Sorry, you got it. That. No, <laughs> I didn't. It's it's been in it's been in my office for like three weeks. I thought it okay. would starve to death by now because there's no <laughs> food in here for it, and it's just one. So if you see it buzzing around the camera, I am not. There's not an infestation. Well, I can see no, it. But, okay. But anyway, back to Asha. I'll stop grasping at the gnat. Um, 
yeah, I, I think she is still a good defensive commander, but yeah, I, I think this did kind of shake up the Greyjoy two list pair uh, decision making a bit. So it, it'll be exciting to see who kind, who kind of rises to the top after this. It, yeah, it may it may still be Asha. Who knows? We'll we'll see. Yeah, yeah. Well, and another change base might might help Asha getting up there as number or staying up there at number two, which is the change on the. Um, on the Iron Makers. So the Iron mm-hmm. Makers basically got a buff on their morale, um, which actually seemed always a little bit like, I don't know, like lore wise. Soapbox, right? Soapbox, there we are. It always seemed a little bit off to have a unit that ha- looks like this and has a seven morale. <laughs> It's like a little mm-hmm. bit weird, especially when you look at the Brotherhood with our banners now, and you see those um, uh, six morale peasants, right? Yeah, <laughs> no, those peasants <laughs> running. <laughs> so, so maybe that was uh, or, or already anticipated in the patch. Uh, so yeah, I, so I can I can really appreciate the six morale, and I feel the six morale also because each and every unit there needs to be some kind of uh, Achilles heel to, yeah, to have them playable. And I think six morale now is fine. They also got a little um, buff on their off- uh, offensive profile, which is also good because, as you said, like in the beginning, um, Iron Makers is or um, or in our pre-discussion, Iron Makers are quite k- kind of a de- yeah, obviously defensive, but also not really n- not really flashy unit that can really do do much it's more kind of Mm -hmm. a passive defensive unit that just stays there and is there to stay right and they're not 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 to die so um yeah what do you make of of the changes and maybe just add a little bit um how can asha still make great use of them in the future yeah so i think it's a good change like you said the the iron makers are never like the most flashy uh high damage unit you know they're they're kind Mm -hmm. of the flip side of the silence men coin you know silence men are all about just hacking things to bits and uh, iron makers are all about being hacked on and not dying yeah i I would say so it's good they got a a, that that die that extra die it really helps them to keep hitting hard all the way to the end if if something is able to grind through them you know because if if they get to two pillage tokens then you know they're at a a, a two plus armor save a five plus morale and then they're hitting with six dice on mm-hmm. their last rank yep. so yep. you know even on their last rank they're throwing six dice which with critical blow that extra die could actually become two hits you know so it, yep. it is only one extra die but they have critical blow natively so that one die could be the difference between getting yep. actually two extra hits especially so, with um, some commander cards correct because uh, right. right to 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 hit to hit on a on a on a two maybe or whatever mm-hmm. the great joys can pull off um that's yeah can be yeah, a big and then with hit. asha yeah and then with asha now with the new boisterous charisma it, when these guys get attacked you know they pass a, a panic test then asha can throw a vulnerable or a weakened out which will either increase their survivability with a weakened token yep. or increase their ability to push damage into the face of their enemy with a vulnerable token. Yeah. And then that also kind of feeds into their Warhammer ability of, of weakening the opponent. So if you, yeah. if, if they're vulnerable, you make them reroll their defense dice and then they roll a one. Mm-hmm. Now they're going to pick up a weakened token. So I think yeah. all this stuff, all this stuff kind of works together to make the iron makers uh, a lot better now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's nothing more to say on the Iron Makers. I like the change, so let's see um, mm-hmm. what kind of lists pop up here and there. Um, that brings us to Commanders. So obviously the only change on Commanders were on Dagmar, um, and especially on two of his cards. So basically we got rid of Coordination Tactics, um, well known from the Free Folk um, because it's in the base deck and uh, it's really good for the free folk to combine abilities, to share abilities for his, for a turn, um, to 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 pull something off. Um, probably, I've also not been able to make like great use of coordination tactics in the past with with Dagmar. Maybe mm-hmm. maybe just me not 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 being able to to play Greyjoy at that at that level, but. Um, I don't know. Maybe 
maybe maybe you can relate. Um, but to finish finish it off, so basically we got rid of this. We got Iron Envy um, and uh, some 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 more changes. The only thing that stayed is Knowledge paid paid in Iron. And uh, as a summary, we have three cards now, which basically give pillage. You can lose pillage, and you may lose pillage. So it's pretty well rounded. But maybe you can guide us through what does that mean for uh, Dagmar. Yeah. So I was never a big fan of coordination tactics personally. I I think coordination tactics to use it really well, you have to you have to really be on top of your um, of of your units placements near each other, knowing which orders to move around or which uh, abilities to move around. I think, uh, I think iron envy is going to be a much more universally useful card. Also the gray joys don't have, I would say as many, uh, abilities that you'd want to share, you know, not like free folk where you'd want to like share hidden traps or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so the iron envy card is pretty interesting. It's, I don't think it's a, you know, going to be a blockbuster kind of a, card for Dagmar, but it is interesting in some things that it will allow. Like you said, now Dagmar has a, a card that will consume a pillage, which is the, um, what is that? Knowledge paid in iron. Knowledge paid in iron. He yeah. has one that generates one, which is the lust for glory. Mm -hmm. And then he has one that can pass around pillage now, which is the iron envy card. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think the iron envy card, it's, it's not a card you're going to really want to play just to, just to move a pillage around so much you know we have we have the uh rating rating call to mm -hmm. to generate pillage also but i think what where you really want to use this card is in a situation where you can at least get a, like two of those effects and i think it's really strong if you have a offensive unit like a you know like the silence men or the reapers who were maybe on one pillage and when they activate you want to lay this card down grab a pillage from a nearby unit to get them to two pillage so mm -hmm. they get their extra attack die and then they get their kind of uh, offensive two pillage ability you know for the reapers you know to be able to pass out a panic token before they hit uh, and then you can give that unit sundering or vicious whatever they don't have you know in the case of the reapers they're going to want to have sundering because they don't have sundering in the case of the silenced men and if the victorian isn't in them which he won't be because this is a dagmar list you can give them vicious so yeah. I think this is a, a card that really helps the the that kind of seven point uh, offensive unit within Greyjoy. Or if uh, you're able to pull off two or three of those effects, it can even really juice up one of your less impressive units. You know, like your units like the Black Tide Chosen that don't have any attack keywords, or your um, or any of the other units that that don't really have any attack keywords. You know, you could kind of make even trappers hit harder. Yeah. Um, so. I think it's it's a good card that situationally could be very useful to set up a really powerful attack. So I, I think it's 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 cool. I don't think there's too much to say for lust for glory. Uh, you know, it just went from allowing you to count as having two pillage to just straight up giving you one pillage, which I think yeah. most Greyjoy players would be happy to have one pillage rather than just count as having two pillage for the round. So I yeah. I think situationally it could be better or worse but I, I think most players would rather have the pillage permanently than only count as having two pillage for the run yeah i feel so too and when i when i read lust for glory i have to think about what we just said right when you have iron makers um down on one or two ranks and you have the pillage on there or you can gain the pillage in that in that particular moment you get the plus one to hit so you hit on twos with six or seven die d d dice even and mm -hmm. then when you have that, you you can you 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 can you can um, uh, the this this minus one to defense does not really matter to you because you're on a three then, which is really good also. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So um, yeah, it really feeds into what we just said about um, the Iron Makers getting that um, attack buff. Yeah, yeah. And uh, just on an unrelated note, I have successfully crushed the small gnat so it will yeah, not be bothering that, uh, me or awesome, anymore awesome awesome <laughs> though so that's on dagmar but one final thing on dagmar is he now would you say he's now straight up better is he viable now because you you i mean you saw him sometimes mm -hmm. but not really often is he now more viable would you use him now I mean, I would use him now a lot more because now he okay. has this. This Iron Envy card is is 
like an actual aggressive attacking mm-hmm. type of card. Coordination yeah. tactics was more, it was very situational and you had to like set it up. And then the, uh, the other two cards were just not all that impressive. But I, mm-hmm. I think with iron envy, you have, you have now like a, a more punchy card. Yeah. Uh, and then lust for, for glory will now give you a pillage token. So I think Dagmar now is a little bit more of an aggressive commander and, a little bit easier to play, I would say. So I, I would definitely like to, to put him on the table and play him. The only downside for me is that I really love his battle scars attachment a lot. So yeah, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't take his, his battle scars attachment now. Yeah, exactly. That's what I wanted to say. Um, it's, it's the same with Night's Watch with, with uh, the, the, the Corin, um NCU. You, you, it, it, it's just so good, right? Uh, you would never mm-hmm. go with the 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 nowadays Corin. You would never trade that for this battle scars, um, and actually go down fighting on him for one point. So that's here the same. So ba- ba- battle scars is such yeah. a great thing, especially for great joys. So you will probably always or not al- almost every time go for the um, the attachment. Yeah, I think you'll definitely <clears> get <throat> tested out a lot more now. I think you'll see more play. Yeah. Um, yeah, and like we were discussing earlier, it'll be interesting to see which commander falls in line behind behind Victorian as the that second commander pick. Since there there weren't too many commander changes made in this patch, I think no. a lot of people were hoping that Baylor Black Tide got some love. Um, which is a great uh, commander, actually, right? Yeah, He's, and, yeah. and his attachment he is is, just... is so good. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. I he's a he's a more fun commander, I think, now. So uh, I mm. I would like to to try him out more now, and we'll see if other people have the same impression. Yeah. yeah. All right. So you mentioned Vic. Let's go from one boogeyman to another boogeyman, which is mm-hmm. Balon, Balon Greyjoy. So in the beginning, we already talked about it. So basically, they changed just that the unit comes back without the pillage. Um, this is. For the effect you can pull off still, a pretty slim drawback or trade-off, mm-hmm. I would say. Um, you can still do what he or he can still do what he what he did before. So um, and that is a thing that is community wide a little bit unexpected. A lot of people were expecting him to be nerfed more. Um, yeah, how do you see it? Yeah, similar. I thought he was going to get a bigger nerf. I thought mm. I thought he was going to lose his ability to spawn on the flanks. I thought maybe he would only be able to spawn mm. in in your deployment zone. Yeah. And then, you know, I heard other people saying maybe he'll change and you can only spawn like a reaver unit. You know, kind of mm. like uh, there's too many uh, with the free folk. You know, they um, it it got nerfed a little bit and. I think this was like the lightest nerf they could have possibly given him. I know, yeah, yeah. some people were saying, well, maybe he'll go to six points uh, instead of five points. So this was a pretty light nerf, and I, I yeah. think, I think it's commendable. I would say on the on the part of the developers here to to not just completely destroy Balon. I, I think a lot of folks were expecting him to just completely get, uh, you know, blown yeah. out of the sky. But yeah. uh, it's a pretty subtle nerf, and I think. I think maybe in the next season we'll see if uh, if Balon and the Greyjoys are performing as expected, then mm. then he then he won't see another nerf if uh, if there's continues to be you know lamentation and uh, rending of garments in the community, then maybe maybe <laughs> you'll see some other um, some other nerf. But yeah, yeah I, I think it was a pretty it was a very light nerf. It doesn't change the way he operates. Yeah. It doesn't change his pick rate at all. I don't think. I think people still take him. And that's the thing. Yeah. yeah, and that's the thing, and that's that's actually what I do not like about when such um, yeah small changes, subtle changes um, appear. Um, the only thing I really dislike is not playing against him, because obviously you can find ways around him, right? There there mm-hmm. are ways. They are not as obvious or not as easy to pull off, but you can do it. But what I do not like about subtle changes or in p- that particular uh, case is. I'm pretty sure there won't be a list without Balon out there. And this is the thing I I cannot appreciate out of this subtle change. Because a change should lead to using all the other NCUs um, as much. Or having him maybe as not, yeah, 
Like often, yeah, they're not the always, always. Like, right? like yeah. look at the Targaryens after the season four patch. You know, yeah. Illyrio was taken in every single list. Yes. And the developers don't like when a unit is like, auto include in yeah. like every list. So Illyrio was completely, you know, just put in a shallow grave. And yeah. I th every, everybody thought, I think, that Balon was going to have the same fate, mm -hmm. but Balon just barely got like a little bit of a a little bit of a slap um yeah so i don't know whether i mean only the only the developers know what their long-term yeah. intentions are but yeah, yeah. we'll see uh you know we'll see how Greyjoys perform in this patch and we'll see how the yeah. um how balon does but i um yeah it was it was hardly it's hardly a nerf it's like a it's a nerf really like in name only i would say so yeah yeah, yeah. maybe next time um and the thing on the on the targaryens it's maybe also because of like i i feel illyrio is in a really balanced state now i think the reason why he's off the board now um a lot of times not always it really depends on the list but is uh, miri right because mm -hmm. miri's just just so so good now with the two tokens and the heal um yeah. so but 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 again th this is something i do not appreciate but let's see but maybe maybe this um do the or the 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 subtle changes over time will bring balon to a perfect state in in the great joys uh faction all right so how we will always end the video is to show you guys uh season five tryouts list so we're collecting all the changes we we trying to make the best out of it and this is what we came up with so we have dagmer um as we just discussed in the iron makers because there is quite some synergy because of his cards also his attachment and and the iron makers um you're on Greyjoy uh in black tie chosen to basically pull off uh, or start with <clears throat> two pillage tokens the stony shore Pill pillages is a, is a is a unit that can hold its ground on its own so often pick naked or without attachment right um and then we have the house hollow reapers with uh the two point victorian great joy attachment which um probably isn't played too much but we feel that this is a a well or well-rounded tech piece for this list so maybe um randall you can guide us through the list yeah so the the first thing you, I mean, the first thing I do when I look at a Greyjoy list is determine like who is your Balon unit, and in this yes. one it's pretty obvious. Enlighten me. Your, your your Reapers. So yeah. like your Reapers are your unit that you're gonna be probably a little yeah. bit reckless with probably, and yeah. um, send in on a suicide mission potentially once the moment is right, and then whenever somebody's attacks them back, Victorian is gonna slap them right back again. Yeah. Assuming they don't get gunned down by uh, by ranged attacks uh, at that point, but the cool thing about Dagmar is you know he has gang up, so anybody that joins a melee with him is going to benefit from uh, from the gang up with an extra attack die and a, a two a plus one to hit. Like you said, Stony Shore Pillagers are a very self sufficient unit. You can just throw them on an objective if you need to. Uh, you can also throw them into a melee, and they can they can hold their own. Yeah. Black Tide Chosen are here to uh, start off with two pillage, so you can move pillage around. You can get pillage onto your Reapers pretty quickly, and then send them in to do their thing. And uh, and then you've got in here Baron Black Tide and Jacken for extra sustain. So you can throw Baron Black Tide on your Reapers uh, once they're stuck in and taking a bunch of hits to keep them alive longer. And uh, then Jacken can clone that ability onto one of your other units or provide one of your units with precision. Yep. So yeah, it's, it's a list that I think can really kind of hold the line with, with the iron makers, the black tide chosen and the stony shore pillagers, while all those units with their pillage generation, those with the, the pillagers and the black tide chosen with their pillage generation, they can kind of feed that pillage to the reapers, either through mm -hmm. divide the spoils or through the, uh, the new, tactics card what is it the iron envy card yeah and uh then the reapers can do a whole bunch of damage before hopefully going down in a blaze of glory and then miraculously and you know furiously appearing on the flank of uh yeah. of the enemy army yeah. so it yeah it looks like a fun a fun army that makes use of uh some of dagmer's uh new new changes and yeah. 
um, keeps leaning into the uh, the effect of Balon that hasn't really changed too much. Yeah. Yeah, I also think this is pr probably not a popular like opinion to play to play that style but i can i can really feel the as you said baron jacken to copy the same influence and we have to think jacken or we, or we have to think about that jacken also can copy something else across the table mm -hmm. so you know yep. you never know what what comes across with there right so um mm -hmm. yeah i really love the list um i i i, I really feel this is something uh, all of you guys out there should try um yeah, we talk with, uh, or I talk with, with quite some good Greyjoy players about it, and they also feel that this is something that can um, shake shake up your list building a little bit. All right, so that's um, that's it on the changes and the list. Uh, puts us to um, the summary. So, Randall, what do you think? Where where are Greyjoy heading in S five? I think they're going to kind of hold their position. I think they mm -hmm. they were up towards the top of the rankings, I would say, in Season 4. I think they're going to stay relatively close. I think they're going to probably be up in the top three or four factions, maybe. I think there's a couple of other factions that got some changes in Season 5 that are going to boost them up a bit. So mm -hmm. I think Greyjoys might drop a little bit just due to the fact that other factions are rising. But yes, I think all the changes to Greyjoys were mostly good the only thing you could really i think call a nerf is maybe asha losing boisterous charisma but True. um that i don't think asha was dictating the, the position of Greyjoys in the meta so i think everything that was working for Greyjoys is still working and yeah. uh they just they got some some subtle buffs here and there i'm mm -hmm. excited to see if people uh take dagmar more and yeah. like we discussed it'll be interesting to see who takes their rightful place next to Victarion in the kind yeah. of two list format if whether that remains Asha or if it's uh, Dagmar or, or someone else. Yeah. Yeah, I hope it's Dagmar, but uh we will see. We will see in the next few weeks and months, so okay. So, uh to end this video, I just want to mention once more that we're really grateful that we could uh pull off this great project with Playmats EU building our own Playmats that give you everything you need to play that uh, game in style and have a quick setup and have all the objective markers and and uh, and the the um, the deck and the uh, discard pile and everything has its place. So Randall was able to play on it. Um, yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, it was a great experience. Yeah, I I especially love the the, the uh, tactics strip, the strip on the yeah. side. Yeah, and having all the all the spots already pre marked very subtly and like not obtrusively, but where you can, where you put all the objective yeah. uh, markers and everything. So yeah, exactly. it was a great experience playing on it. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Th thanks to our Patreons to making this happen. And um, yeah, if you want to become a Patreon and see this content and this channel uh, continue growing and do all the stuff we do for the community, um, consider becoming a Patreon and support us. You will find the links in the description below. And uh, Randall, I think there is nothing more to say until we meet again. Roll those crits, guys. Come for the hits and stay for the crits.